All right, I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, ADI Rollout Stories. We'll be featuring a variety of ways that ADI has been implemented by teachers and districts from around the country. This webinar will be recorded and posted on our website as well as our social media platforms for later viewing or sharing. If you haven't already, please follow us on Twitter, which you can see in the lower left-hand corner of the screen to interact with ADI and our community. My name is Autumn Lennart. I'm the Assistant Program Coordinator here at ADI. I'll be in the chat and monitoring the Q&A, so if you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to post them. Facilitating our webinar today is Leanne Gleim, our Account Executive. So let's review how you can interact with us throughout this webinar. At the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A icon where you can submit your questions. Your question could be selected to be answered live at the end of the webinar during our Q&A. If this is the case, your question will be marked answered live. We'll also be taking additional questions in a more informal setting after we end the session. The chat function allows you to chat with each other throughout the webinar, which a couple of us have been participating in already, Chile and Austin today. Um, as always, we'll be sharing a lot of ideas really, really quickly, but don't worry, this webinar will be recorded and posted to the website as well as emailed to webinar registrants. Any links that we share during the webinar are available in the webinar notes page, which you can find at this link, um, which I also just added to that chat. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass this over to Leanne. Thank you so much, Autumn, and thank you everybody for joining us. Really excited to share some stories about ADI today over a, a quick lunch here, and please stay warm in most parts of the country. Um, I did get a good chuckle out of the chat there. Uh, just to go over our goals for this webinar, we're gonna, I'm going to share ADI's story, and then we're going to hear uh, four featured stories from teachers and districts about how they've rolled out ADI. And then we'll end with our ADI implementation planning uh, services, just share a little bit about what we do um, and how you can, can get involved there. So our featured stories are going to cover um, two first year stories, one teacher and a district that's in their first year of rollout. And then we're going to end with a couple established districts, as well as one of our teachers that is using ADI online. So one of the things that I wanted to share first was um, Vic's story. Dr. Vic Sampson is the co-founder and creator of Argument Driven Inquiry. And ADI was really born in his classroom in Arizona in 2005 when he was also a PhD candidate. And one of the things that Vic really wanted to do was give his students a chance to figure things out rather than just engaging in prescriptive um, confirmation investigations. And so this shift was really his drive for creating the ADI instructional model. And he also wanted to represent science the way that it's done, right? It's not always one right answer, really getting the students involved in meaning making and, and collaboration, much like scientists do, and give those students an opportunity to figure things out rather than just learning about content. And so much of the model that Vic uh, tried in its early stages was, was based on the research that he was learning about and engaging with in his PhD program. And so Vic really was ADI's first pilot teacher when he was designing it in his classroom. So as Vic refined the model and got his first position as a assistant professor at Florida State, he received a grant from NSF to research the ADI model. And um, I was actually, that's where I was introduced to ADI was as one of his grad students and um, really enjoyed being a part of, of its process in its early days as well. And so the results of that grant was our first book um, published in 2014. And once these materials got into the hands of teachers, we really found a demand for support to be able to implement the ADI model. And that's when our co-founder, Krista Clark, really took on the business side of argument-driven inquiry, and we started conducting professional learning workshops. And you see here on the right a picture from one of the district-based workshops that we do where we help teachers implement ADI. And then on the left, we have our first class of facilitators who were trained to then go back to their districts and facilitate ADI workshops. So as the demand for professional learning uh, to support the ADI model grew, we really found five types of workshops that helped 
uh, transform teachers uh, implementation. The first is obviously introducing teachers and specialists to the ADI model. And then those next three are really built around meeting the needs of the teachers and their district specific goals. So things like changing the existing curriculum so teachers can use the ADI materials. Another type of workshop is enriching teachers' understanding of the ADI practices. And then we also have supporting the use of ADI instructional materials throughout the year. And our final type of workshop, you heard me reference already, is preparing teachers to teach others in their district about the ADI model. So much like the ADI model itself, as uh, Vic and Krista dove into designing these professional learning experiences, we really found uh, 10 key features for meaningful and transformative professional learning. And much like uh, that research that really was, was grounding how uh, the ADI model was built, we relied on the research on how adults learn to design professional learning that, that was really supportive of implementing this process. The backbone is really those top two features, the providing high quality instructional materials and modeling what instruction looks like. And then the rest of the types of workshops that we do really highlight features that are dependent upon district needs. And so we have an awesome alignment in our PL catalog of these features. I don't wanna go through all that today, but know that that does exist. And if you're interested in learning more, you can always send us a quick email. So how it's going for ADI. Since it started in 2005, we've developed three programs for argument-driven inquiry in science, math, and engineering. 10 books have now been published. And as of this last year, we have 60 plus digital investigations in the ADI online student-facing platform. And we've worked directly with more than 7,000 teachers and have more than 2 million students engaged in rigorous and equitable instruction with ADI. So if you do want to see the full story, you can visit our website there, and that link will also be in the notes page as well. So one of the things that you'll see here, um, this is a, an example roadmap of some of the professional learning experiences that we can link together to help meet district needs. And as I talk through the stories uh, today, you'll see kind of a, a theme of how some of these linked professional learning experiences support implementation. So the first story that I'm gonna share is Michelle's. She is a first year teacher in Texas and Michelle learned about ADI from her instructional coach. Uh, because this is her first year, her first ADI investigation was in a hybrid classroom. Michelle is clearly a rock star. You can see one of her students there. They were able to distribute materials or do labs based on materials the students had. And one of the things that she noted she really enjoyed was um, that this is her favorite type of learning, right? The inquiry where students are at the center of the meaning making and really figuring things out um, appealed to her, not just uh, for her students, but as a teacher as well. So Michelle offers some advice to other teachers about ADI. And one of the things that she really shared in her story, which you can also view on our blog, is the whole point of scientific inquiry um, is that the process is a cycle. And ADI really, um, really, reflects that because you're not, I, I know back when I was first in my um, undergrad teacher program, we really had more nature of science in um, units and the, the three-dimensional learning as we now call it was really relegated to a unit rather in, than embedded throughout the curriculum. And so one of the great parts about ADI is this isn't a one-off experience. Your students are going to get more time to engage with different content using the same model. So it, the system is designed to learn from risk and failure. And Michelle loved uh, that part that her students get a try again. So let's take a quick glance at Michelle's district. So Michelle is from a large suburban district and they opted to start with a cohort model or a pilot and that was in elementary, fourth and fifth grade. There you see in July of 2018. And in that first year we also came back to do an introduction to ADI with lead teachers in elementary, middle school, and high school. And after that, uh, those first initial experiences with the lead cohort and teachers, the district then sent five representatives to our facilitator institute. And so Michelle's district really relied on the internal trainers to continue the implementation of argument-driven inquiry. And that's one of the models that, that we continually see represented. And having a facilitator in your district is a great, not just for rolling out ADI, but also supporting the implementation of ADI internally. 
So let's jump to a first year district. Monroe is in Ohio. They are a small rural school and they are not only implementing argument-driven inquiry science, but also argument-driven inquiry math. So they're using an extensive direct-to-teachers plan, which is over two years. And well, whereas Michelle's district used the Facilitator Institute to roll out ADI, Monroe is currently using it to support implementation internally. So Monroe was able to write and receive a grant for professional learning and implementation to support a couple of their current initiatives, um, the largest of which was writing across the curriculum. So in April of 2020, you see there on the right hand side, uh, a district representative reached out and kind of shared their story with me a little bit. And after we had talked through their goals, I put together a plan of how we can roll this out to meet the needs of their, their project-based learning initiative, their writing across the, the curriculum initiative, and some of the instructional shifts that they wanted to, to see. So then in the summer, as we were finalizing details and, and planning, they had district representatives attend our facilitator institute, and they were really kind of the first teachers to try ADI in their classrooms as well. And we did a multi-day introduction to ADI in October of this uh, past year. So one of the things that I really wanted to share was a high school science teacher really loved um, that the facilitator, Carrie, took them through the step-by-step -step process and addressed the questions. This is a common um, comment that we receive. Teachers love being able to engage in the model and kind of the mental rigor there as students when we come to a workshop. And because Monroe opted to do a multi-day introduction on a couple of the following days, um, she really noted that um, sharing the the investigations that, that Carrie recommended was really helpful. So not just talking about the model and learning about the model, but also identifying here are some things that you can do to support your students and, and be able to set yourself up for success when you're rolling it out. And up next for Monroe, since they are still in that first year, we're going to be going back uh, virtually in April. And doing a next steps workshop. Those types of workshops are really where the teachers have had a chance to experience some sort of, of ADI implementation in their classroom to try it out. And then we can come back and talk through, you know, what worked well, what didn't, let's create a plan for moving forward, as well as looking at student work samples and even talking about facilitating high quality discussion. We're also going to be doing some curriculum refinement where we help um, choose which investigations are going to be embedded in the curriculum. And then for next fall, our on-demand coaching has become uh, one of our most popular features lately. They, uh, this is really for folks who have um, time for PD, right, is uh, in short order. And so on-demand coaching allows teachers, um, up to 10 teachers, to book a time on our PL team's calendar to schedule collaborative planning, to debrief from an implementation, and it's really in the moment support of ADI implementation. And this was really addressed in um, one of the high school math teachers' comments from Monroe. So she really appreciated that ADI wasn't just an additional um, instructional model that they were using, but was really linking all of their initiatives into one project, right? So it, it pulled together some of the project-based learning they were trying to do, as well as writing across the curriculum. So ADI really offered a solution to streamline that process. So next we're gonna to jump to McAllen's story. So this is one of our established districts in Texas. And I chose this one because they targeted um, eighth grade science as well as biology, which are tested subjects in the state of Texas. And McAllen also opted to do a pilot in year one with their eighth grade science teachers and a few lead biology folks. They used a direct to teacher plan in year one and have continued to roll it out internally with the facilitator institute and having some internal facilitators. The first quote, uh, this one is great because it's from a seventh grade teacher from one of the last trainings that we did in McAllen. But the teacher had, um, since the district had been using ADI for a while, she'd heard about it before and, and hadn't really gone through any of the professional learning just yet. So she noted that um, we broke it down perfectly. She enjoyed engaging in the model. And even though she used to be intimidated by ADI, she really felt confident after that initial experience to roll it out in her classroom, which I think is great. So this is a, a more um, robust plan here in year one. So you'll notice in 2017, 2018, they're introducing and changing 
the instruction in with that pilot eighth grade group and a few biology folks. So we did an introduction to ADI in August, followed by curriculum refinement after that first year to make sure they had the investigations in place for um, year two. And then in year two, 2018-2019, they adopted it both in eighth grade and biology. And so because a lot of the teachers had had an experience implementing ADI in their classroom, we did some next steps workshops in August of 2018, as well as the ongoing support with and um, making sure that the teachers were ready to go in the fall of 2018. So then after that first full year of eighth grade in biology, we came back and did another curriculum refinement, which is always a great time to say, you know, what do we need to change, what worked, and get them ready for um, the next year. And from there, McAllen has really opted to continue implementing ADI internally. So they sent some representatives to our facilitator institute and have been continuing to roll it out to additional grade bands like that seventh grade teacher we heard from earlier to implement the model within the district. One of the things that is really great about this type of implementation is the teachers really appreciated having that time as a district to collaborate and share and reflect on the labs that they had done during the school year. So not only did we plan them after that first year, but then we came back after that second year to be able to talk through some shifts and make sure that they were set up for um, their third year of adoption. And the teacher really appreciated that modeling of instruction feature for some of the workshops and wanted to make sure that after they'd had that initial experience of trying it out, they could come back. Because the ADI is a process, it's easy to um, you know, identify with some stages initially. And then when we, we come back that second time, I know there's always that like aha moment. Oh yeah, I forgot about that piece. So it's a great way to continue to grow practice. As I mentioned, McAllen picked um, two tested age groups. And so we do have their scores here on the, the state test for eighth grade and biology. And eighth grade was adopted in 2017 and 2018. And you can see in the subsequent years that we're seeing more students in the approaches and masters categories. So we're seeing a correlation of an increase in, in uh, proficiency in eighth grade science with the implementation of ADI as well as um, similar results with biology, which was adopted in um, 2018 and 2019. And because ADI is not a curriculum, we're an instructional model for investigations, we can't say that, that we cause uh, an increase in proficiency, but we can say um, correlationally that districts that implement ADI see student, uh, an increase in student proficiency in science. So our last story here is going to be Brandy's story. And Brandy is one of our teachers from um, a large suburban Georgia district who has been one of our longest um, adopted districts as well. So I don't have their full implementation plan on here. I am happy to talk through it with anybody, but just a quick note on how they roll out ADI to their teachers as they would do summer institutes, three to four days where we'd bring in eight to 10 facilitators to either introduce ADI or do some of those next step experiences with different age levels, content areas, um, and so, as I mentioned, they fully adopted in 2014. So this past year, they knew they were going to be remote for the school year. And so some of their trained teachers like Brandy um, were going to be using our ADI online student facing platform. There on the screen, you do see a quick screenshot of a student um, narrating their group's initial argument. That's not directly from um, our platform, but I put it uh, up there so that you could really see one of the comments Brandy reflects on here in just a minute. So she said a lot of her students feel muted, um, like they don't have a voice, both literally and figuratively. Um, and some of her students don't talk in class or aren't able to um, just with time constraints, with Zoom meetings, all of, all of those sorts of things. And so one of the things that you'll hear her say is she hadn't heard a lot of her students' voices. And so one of the things she really appreciated about our online platform when students are able to narrate their group's initial argument is getting to hear those students' voices and as they share their ideas. So I'm gonna let Brandy uh, talk for herself here. She is going to share, it's about a minute and a half clip or so, uh, and she'll share some of her favorite parts of the ADI online platform. One thing that kind of irks me about learning management systems is having to uh, all these external links. So it's there in the learning management system, but then I got to take you here and then you got to come back. And then, you know, so that it kind of 
it kills the joy of having the the system itself because now you still got to go over there and do it and then you got to come back here and do something else and so having it all there um in one place is definitely helpful and then i i like the the screencasting piece i was really surprised i thought the kids would be a little immature with it but when i went back and listened to their their screencastings i was like okay y'all might y'all might actually be scientists you know i really like that and i appreciated that it was there especially in the in the learning module um i think a lot of students they they feel kind of muted um, like they, they don't really have a voice. I, I don't know where I'm supposed to talk. When am I supposed to say something? And so the screencasting, like some of mine that don't talk in class, that was my first time hearing their voice. And I'm like, you have a great voice. Like I, I need to hear from you. Um, so I really like that piece. And I think once they got the hang of it, um, that's really a, a good piece. So I like those two features. <laughs> There we go. Uh, wonderful. So you can see uh, from Brandy that that she really had a positive experiencing experience making the shift from implementing the ADI model in her classroom to working with her students in a digital platform. And so that's really what I'm going to highlight in the district rollout plan here. I already mentioned that Brandy is from a large suburban district and that they utilized summer institutes to um, introduce the model as well as support ongoing change in the model with their, their teachers. They do have facilitators on site, again, a common theme that you'll see with a lot of our districts, and they do offer ongoing support PL. So let's look at their rollout plan for sharing ADI online. Since they knew they were going to be virtual this summer in July, they did get together a group of lead teachers and took them, we were able to take them through an introduction to ADI. So really similar to our initial PL experiences, but they did it in the online platform. So they were able to familiarize themselves with the system and start to um, internalize some of those shifts that were going to have to be made facilitating it at a distance. Once they had a chance to interact with the platform more and kind of debrief after that initial introduction, we then came back and did a next steps workshop. So we're talking a little bit more specifically about um, what it's gonna look like in the classroom and addressing some common concerns that they had. And then throughout this fall, uh, or past fall rather, we did on-demand coaching. So that's where we have those 90 minute sessions where we can help with collaborative planning, troubleshoot, and really once they got past that initial tech barrier, talk about interacting with their students in the, as they um, learn more about the content. So that's the end of our, our featured stories. And I wanna talk for just a minute about how uh, you can explore options for rolling out ADI in your school or district. So one of the things that we commonly do is PL planning, and I, I've already mentioned it a couple times, but just having a brief conversation on what your goals are and helping identify if, if ADI um, can help and then what would be the best for supporting those goals with ADI professional learning. So once we have that initial conversation, we put together a plan similar to one of the ones you saw at the beginning of the webinar, and then we can talk through uh, scheduling, you know, timing. Time right now is, is on, you know, in short order for everyone. So making sure that we can fit it in your calendar. So if you do want a workshop preview, we have a link there for a quick video on our website where you can check that out. And if you're interested in scheduling a planning meeting, I do have that bit.ly link up there where you can have access to um, scheduling a time to connect, or you can always email us at pl at argument driven inquiry. So here's that plan that I shared a little bit earlier in the webinar. And so this would be the result of um, after that conversation, some of the things that we can talk through about sharing meaningful and transformative professional learning, highlighting some of those key features that we really base our professional learning on to help your teachers make those shifts and be able to implement the ADI model. All right, so we talked through ADI's story today, our featured stories from uh, teachers and districts, as well as ADI implementation planning. Um, just again, to remind you, there's that uh, notes page for a lot of the links that we'll be talking through and some of the supports I'm gonna share here as we wrap up. And now's a great time to submit your questions. I see a couple in the chat as well as in the Q&A. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to submit those now. And once I get through the support slides, um, Autumn and I will have that Q&A session. And if you do wanna hang around, um, even after we, we stop the formal webinar, we'll be here in an informal setting too.
So let's go ahead and review some of the resources that we have available for implementing ADI. So as you saw in Brandy's story, one of our newest ways to support teachers is our ADI online platform powered by Edgeflow. We're really excited to be able to offer this one-stop shop to help teachers implement ADI in virtual, face-to-face, -face, and hybrid settings. Our ADI online webpage is a great resource to reference or share if you're interested in learning more about this platform. And at the bottom of the page, you can view and download our elementary or secondary flyers with investigation topics and pricing info. If you'd like additional information or even to see a live demo, you can always email us again at pl at argument driven inquiry. And if you're interested in learning more about the ADI instructional model, we've been working on lots of online and virtual professional learning options. If you're looking for self-paced, asynchronous options, we've got intro to ADI for elementary and secondary, as well as next steps to ADI uh, um, available. If you prefer a more collaborative option or would like to try an investigation from a student's perspective, our virtual synchronous PL options would be great for you. We invite you to join us. We have several for this spring and we'll be doing introductions to science as well as the math instructional models and a next steps for writing task-based three-dimensional assessments, which we're really excited about. And then of course, we can always um, do a district-based professional learning in person or online where we can tailor the workshop to meet the interests and needs of your teachers, really similarly to a lot of those uh, stories that I shared with you today. So finally, we're excited to share our upcoming facilitator train the trainer events. Our virtual train the trainer is our most cost effective offer to join the ADI family and includes everything you need um, to be able to facilitate highly professional workshops. We hope that you'll be able to join us March uh, 2nd through 4th coming up quickly for three days of collaboration. And if that's something you're interested in, let us know and we can make sure that uh, we can get your materials to you here on time. And we're also hoping to do a live face-to-face -face event this summer near Dallas, Texas on July 12th through the 15th. And you can find more information on our event pages in the uh, webinar notes page. Oh, hold on, there we go. Uh, and finally, to learn more um, about all of these events, please click that professional learning tab as I mentioned earlier. And then we have a lot of free resources for um, supporting ADI, including our webinars. We've got Twitter at Argument Driven. You can also join our Facebook group at Argument Driven um, Teachers. And then we have some great how-to videos that go over the stages of ADI, as well as you can view um, ADI in action videos. So please save the date for our next webinar coming up, ADI Hacks number five, writing assessments and exit tickets on February 24th. And again, if you're interested in learning how to implement ADI to meet your goals, feel free to um, schedule that time uh, for a listening meeting or email us. And Autumn, what, uh, what questions do we have to tackle today? Yeah, we've got some really great questions today. Um, Claire asks, do you have any suggestions for working with teachers or grade levels that are resistant to change? Absolutely, Claire, of course I do. Um, so one of the things, the, those three middle bullet points, right? So changing, supporting, enriching. Um, it's really helpful to have some of those supportive workshop options, whether it's next steps. I think we really see some transformative change with those next steps workshops because what teachers bring to that are student artifacts, right? So we're meeting those teachers where they are, um, looking at student artifacts and helping address some of their concerns. If they're not to that point yet where they've given it a try and are reticent to even trying it, um, those extended introductions, so kind of day two and three of an introductory workshop are extremely helpful, especially if you have some teachers that have tried ADI. So we can look at some actual samples from the district, talk through some of the ways that those teachers have implemented ADI. Um, because I I'm sure as you know, Claire, and, and um, you know what we've experienced is we can really support the teachers as best we can, but hearing from a peer or being able to see the results of a peer in their own district working with district students is one of the, the most impactful ways. Um, and just with the current environment, 
taken into account, meaning PD days are, are limited. Um, On-demand coaching we've seen be a huge success for that. So the once teachers have been introduced to ADI, regardless of if they've tried it or not, that gives them time to meet with our PL team and be able to talk through, all right, what do I need to take into account? Here's what I'm really nervous about. Um, and to be able to set forth a plan that increases that confidence. Um, but, you know, PD days aside, if, if, you, if you've got some, I really think the most impactful place is, is giving them a chance to tack, uh, like to grapple with the model a little bit more and then to hear about it from a peer and even giving them a chance to model, see model instruction with a peer in the classroom um, who is implementing ADI is something we've really found to be successful. And then Laura asked, I know that some, or I'm sorry, I know that you all have a lot of backing in Texas. Will you all ever design some labs for the Texas Tech? My teachers sometimes complain that the labs don't really cover our techs um, or don't go far enough or go too far. Yeah, absolutely. Great question, Laura. Um, and so TEKS uh, especially are something that we continue to work on and that's where those curriculum refinement workshops really are helpful because with some very small tweaks, we can help line out some um, ADI investigations that can help address those TEKS. And where there is some um, holes in some topics, we're working on continuing to align them. And I know um, the TEKS revision is, is in process. I've, I haven't looked over the middle school just yet, um, but that's one of the, the places where we've really worked with districts to identify, all right, what are the content, um, those core ideas that we really want to address? Let's find find some of those investigations that are gonna work. And if we don't have some, we also have professional learning options where we can work with you to make sure that you can transform maybe a, a lab that works really well into, into an ADI um, investigation. And to kind of add to that, um, that's one thing that we're really excited about with getting our materials in a digital format that allows us to be able to continue to add to the library of digital investigations that we have available to be able to support um, the creation of more robust um, investigations to be able to address TEKS and, and even beyond that, if you're not in the state of Texas, other state standards that aren't necessarily um, NGSS aligned. We, we love all states, we don't discriminate. Um, and then I don't know if this is something that Leanne, you'll be able to answer directly, but you might have some insight or if anybody wants to share in the chat. Erin said, um, I would love to hear from districts who have rolled out ADI in multiple content areas. What do you wish you would have known before diving in? Um, and what are your best tips for getting teacher buy-in and making sure it's successful? Oh, great question, Erin. Good to see you. Um, yeah, that's so we're getting to that point, right? So our, our math materials um, and engineering as well will be released this summer. Um, and we have several districts, like I shared Monroe's story, who are in that first year of implementation. And I, I think the big hurdle here in, in addressing those questions is as we've seen some districts start to roll it out in multiple content areas, unfortunately this year has been a really tough year um, for getting a true representation of what that's like. And I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir a bit here for you all. I know you're, you're well aware of that. Um, but I, I think that that's a great question and something we wanna continue to share as we um, share stories about how folks have rolled out ADI in science, math, and engineering. And one of the things that I will share, I, I've commonly been doing, especially um, I found in the last few months, is if, if you are looking for something and want a reference, please let us know. Send me a quick email and uh, just say, hey, Leanne, looking at doing X, Y, Z, do you have somebody I can connect with to talk about um, some of those questions, such as what do you wish you would have known or what are your tips for getting that teacher buy-in? Um, because we all know we can put forth the best PD plan in the world, but <laughs> unless we're meeting the teachers where they are and, and helping them overcome some of their concerns, it's not gonna do us any good. So um, always happy to share references references and, and I always ask before I share contact information. Um, so happy to connect folks so that uh, you can get more insight. All right, and then I think we've got one more. Uh, Quinn said, like a lot of districts, our budget's not great for next year. What or if any cost-effective recommendations do we have? Yeah, great question, Quinn. I appreciate that. 
Um, so we really have districts address this in several ways. So in the um, kind of the end slides here, I shared some of our virtual options. Um, for better or worse, we've really embraced virtual workshops and our facilitators do an amazing job. Carrie, our instructional designer, puts together a great virtual workshop. And because that allows us to save a little bit on travel, we do pass the savings on to our districts. So um, a virtual intro to ADI workshop, you're gonna save a little bit of money. Um, that said, I know budgets are tight. So we also have some asynchronous options that are pretty cost effective. Now your teachers are gonna get all the same content they would get in a synchronous or face-to-face -face workshop. They're just going to view student video versus engaging in the investigation. Um, so there are some ins and outs there, but I think it's a great way to um, meet teachers where they are and expose them to the ADI model. And one of the, our, our biggest return on investment is our facilitator institute. Um, so that can really be a cost effective measure that a lot of district op, districts opt for is sending a, a um, instructor or even a curriculum and instruction teaching and learning person to one of our facilitator institutes. And they get everything they need to be able to facilitate our um, our professional learning workshops for intro to ADI, including PowerPoints, all the scaffolding materials, kits, you name it. And so that's a great um, option as well. And certainly happy to talk through um, your budget and, and see what we can put together for you. And Claire just shared something really great in uh, the chat. She said, our district has used federal funds and grant funds for PD and to buy materials. If you haven't used the local or state funds, you can use Title II for PD and Title IV STEM for materials or PD. Yeah, absolutely. Great point, Claire. Thank you for sharing. Um, and on our blog, we actually have a recent uh, blog post about CARES Act funds. And, um, you know, some schools are, are really um, getting to the point with this second round of CARES Act funds where they can start to utilize some of those for instructional materials through expanded Title I, um, but great point to point out that Title II can be used for PD and Title IV for STEM or PD. So thanks so much, Claire. If, if uh, that's it, Autumn, I think we can wrap it up here today. I'll hang out for a minute once we stop the uh, broadcast in an informal setting if anybody has questions, but thank you all so much for joining us and have a great rest of your day.